Welcome guys to episode 10, finally it's out and this episode is going to be completely about shooting the walls, ceiling and other things like the doors. There's been a fair bit of progression since the last video which is exciting because it actually looks like I'm getting somewhere now. So first off I just want to say that I put up a fair bit of content on Instagram and Facebook so if you don't follow them, there they are just there. Give me a follow, give me a like and I put up content much more often than releasing these van build series videos. So you can see the progression during the episodes before I release the main one on Instagram or Facebook. Speaking of Instagram, I just want to give a shout out to my mate Hayden who gave me a hand mounting and shooting all these walls. He was a massive help and I'd like to shout him out now on Instagram. Go give him a follow. He's also interested in the van life. He lives in a van so it's definitely the same wavelength as this channel. So give him a follow, he's an awesome guy and he does sick photography. So as always, go to my website, there'll be a corresponding blog post to this episode, breaking down all the prices, costs, gear and the way that I did everything in more detail. So I'm not gonna make this intro too long. Basically this episode is gonna be based around shooting the walls, the ceiling, doors and all that stuff. So let's get into it. Alright guys, so the first thing I did was use my Stanley knife to cut up the earth wall insulation and pack all the cavities that are still open. Insulation's effectiveness is measured in its R value and this particular earth wall insulation has an R value of 2. So this van, as you can see, has a combination of the initial PIR polyiso annuit insulation, which I did in episode four. And I did a hybrid between that and this earth wall insulation because it would be much easier to fit in the walls in these odd spaces with the earth wall insulation that can adapt to any size. It's also much cheaper per square meter for this earth wall insulation compared to the PIR foam. Um, but I do find personally that the PIR foam performs just a little bit better, especially because it's got the reflective foil on the outside and reflects radiative heat. But I'm happy with this insulation. And just as a side note, I didn't cover the wall with a moisture barrier. I feel like this earth wall insulation isn't going to get uh, affected by moisture and yeah, there's not going to be much moisture in the walls from condensation anyway, so I didn't end up doing that. Now before I sheeted the walls, I decided that I was going to put in some battens that are recessed in the PIR foam. And this was supposed to give extra support to holding the wall fixed. And this thing right here is called a pocket jig and I'm drilling pocket holes which you can see right there, that's a pocket hole. And these give the timber a really strong way to fix to other timber or what you can see me doing here with battens. Um, it's an excellent tool, I really highly recommend it because it's not that expensive and it makes your life a whole lot easier.
Now after all that work, I actually didn't end up using these ply battens to secure the ply to the wall. But I think they're, they're gonna come in handy maybe the cabinetry later for extra support. Um, I can always use them, they're there. But I didn't end up using them for the sheeting. You've seen me use this trick before, it's just a hole saw cut out of a bit of timber and I'm running along the R12 of the wheel there to get the correct curve. Then I'll um, cut it up, mark it out, cut it up and I'll get the exact right curve of the R12. So here you can see me using that bit of scrap ply to transfer that curve onto the good ply. And now I'm gonna kick it to the wall, put it flat, and the mounting process me and Hayden used was pre-drilling holes and then riveting the ply to the wall. I was as careful as I could be with drilling the holes in the wall because there's wires in certain places in the cavities and I really didn't want to go through that. So if you've done the same wiring type, just be really careful that you don't go through the wires. We found it worked well that Hayden holds the wall while I get the first couple of rivets in just to get the hold of on the wall and then once that we can let go and smash the rest of the rivets in. And the ply I'm using to sheet the walls is called bracing ply. I think it's three mil thick, three or four mil. Um, it's not too expensive. It doesn't, it's not, doesn't have a nice finish on it, but you're not really gonna see this ply. It's gonna be behind the cabinetry and I'm gonna paint it in the next step. Before I sheeted the ceiling, I had to drill a hole in the roof to get my Wi-Fi cable out for my Wi-Fi antenna. So I pushed the cable out and used something called a deck tight, which is that thing just there. And this is basically like a roof seal to get cable out from inside. I used a bit of WD-40 to push it through easier. In hindsight, I shouldn't have cut the hole in the top so big to poke the cable out, but I just sickered it up and I tested it, it's fully waterproof. Next I started cutting up the Pine VJ timber boards for the ceiling and the roof. And shout out to my mate's little brother for giving me a hand putting these VJ timbers up because that length there is about 4.2 meters and over the course of that it just bends and makes it nearly impossible to put it by yourself so 
Thanks very much for that, mate. So the way we did it was we held the timber up in position, then I did the end and middle screws. Then once it was held, I finished pre-drilling every single other hole and put in all the screws, then started onto the next board. So as you can see, these boards clip into each other. So yeah, it's important that you make sure you get the first board nice and straight. And it's important that you make sure each board is clipped in really hard to the previous board. And once the board started building up, it was harder to get the screw straight. So I used a string line to reference the straight line, mark it with a pencil, and then pre-drill my holes and screw it in. I honestly thought the ceiling was gonna be much harder than what it was, but if you just take your time, measure really precisely, cut precisely, and have one friend helping you, you should be pretty fine. Next I marked up where the wires have to come through in the fan shroud. So I marked this, make sure that I didn't cut it too deep because then you'll see it from the bottom and then hit the wires and then mounted it up. So next I started edging in all the paint on the walls. So I would recommend before you do this, if you use similar ply to me, to sand the ply back and even apply a primer coat because I had to use a fair few coats of paint because the ply just sucked the paint in and yeah, I had to do about four or five coats of paint. The paint that I did use is called Vivid White and it's a water-based coat so it makes it really easy to apply and also quite easy to clean your brush and your roller. And now I'm moving on to paneling the front wall. So I've used the exact same VJ Pine timbers as I did with the ceiling. I cut the boards just a little bit longer than the total width of that wall there. And what I did was once I'd mounted it and was sure that it was in, in position, I sanded the edge so that it was all flush with that vertical timber there. I use the exact same mounting process as I did with the ceiling, pre-drill all the holes and then screw it in with countersunk screws. Initially I wasn't using countersunk screws and I actually took every single screw out of the ceiling and I switched around about now to countersunk because I just thought that they looked much better.
I know you guys love me using Sikaflex, so I use Sikaflex 221 that I had left over from the solar panels and I mounted these pine boards straight to the back of the melamine waterproof shower sheeting. I used the pocket hole jig again to drill some pocket holes in some leftover plywood from the floor and I use these to make shelves in the recessed part of the wall and I'm thinking these are going to be like spice racks or something like this and I also invested in a right angle drill bit as you can see here to screw in the parts where my drill can't get to. So I spaced them all evenly apart and you can see me mounting the cover face right now. It was a little bit tricky because I wanted to get the lines running through the timber, the same as the lines on the left. So it took a, little, a fair bit longer, but it was worth it just to get it all nice and neat. Next was to make the door pine panels. So I used baking paper and stuck it together with electrical tape to help make the template. Then I stuck it up to the door and traced around the edges where I needed to make the cuts. And then I placed this on a bit of scrap ply, cut out the template, and then I went around the template with Nico pen so that I could transfer that onto the template ply. And then I cut this out with a jigsaw. Once I cut it out, I put it up to the door, marked any little slight adjustments that I needed to make, and then I cut these little bits off. So to make the door panels, I simply cut a couple of lengths of the pine boards, and then I just glued them together with wood glue. The next day when these boards are all dry, I used the template to mark over the pine boards and cut it out with a jigsaw. I then used a belt sander to get the nice curves on the edges and get it all smooth, ready to mount. So as with all the other pine timber, I pre-drill the first hole, get the screw in so it holds, and then I pre-drill the rest of the holes and screw it in.
So firstly, I marked out the shroud just around the little handle there. I cut out the little extra bits. So I had to sand the back of the pine boards much thinner so that the backing of the pine boards doesn't interfere with the cover plate shroud. And I know it seems counterproductive, but I actually did take all the door panels back off again and sanded them down with 240 grit sandpaper. And after I did this, I blew them off with an air blower and then used a damp rag to make sure no residual timber was left. And I'm using Danish oil that I bought from Bunnings and I used a just a standard rag to apply this slowly to each part of the prepped timber. And I made sure that it was all applied evenly. There wasn't any really damp spots that were gonna dry funny. But your first coat of Danish oil, the timber will suck it in pretty quickly. So yeah, apply a generous amount. I only feel myself applying one coat of the Danish oil, but I actually applied four coats in total. So as you saw, I pre-sanded it with 240 grit sandpaper, then I applied the first coat of Danish oil, then I sanded it again with 400 grit sandpaper, then applied the second coat of Danish oil, then I sanded it with 600 grit sandpaper, then applied the third coat of Danish oil, and then finally I sanded it down with 800 grit sandpaper, and then applied the fourth coat of Danish oil. So basically getting smoother and smoother towards the end of the coats. And basically you can apply however many coats you want, depends how um, dark you want it. Danish oil doesn't go heaps dark. It um, sort of just makes the timber have a nice pop to all the grain. So I applied four coats, I was happy with it and happy with the smoothness of the timber. And just quickly, I used an entire two liter can of Danish oil to apply the four coats on all the surfaces in my van. And I would strongly recommend getting a like a proper breathing apparatus mask because for the first three coats I just used a, an old t-shirt but on the fourth I bought a proper one and it made all the difference in the world. So just buy a proper mask, it's good for your lungs and it's more healthy for you. Righto guys, so everything's completed, the shooting's all done. I'll just run it through you real quickly what I've done in this episode. So, firstly I built these shelves and I'm thinking that these are going to be like a spice racks or just you can hold various, I don't know, items in there but mainly for spices because the kitchen's gonna be right here so it's gonna be handy just to have quick access to that stuff. I do still have to put in some like edging or some cornicey stuff on these edges in the corner there, up the top there, just to like make that really neat because the gaps are a little bit uneven. So I'm gonna make that nice and neat. I've still got to build a door there, still got to build a door here. That's the front paneling there. There's gonna be a light switch and all the control switch just about here. As I said in the last episode, there's gonna be like a little mini bulkhead to, to enclose all these wires. 
but that's basically the sliding door. I've done that up nice with the panelling there. There is a gap here. It's minute, but it doesn't look like much in the video, but that's probably about five mil, which is enough to allow for expansion. So here is the ceiling and everything looks really nice with the Danish oil coat that I did. Max Air fans, they're looking good. The walls are vivid white and I had to do a fair few coats on them because the ply just sucked in all the paint and I literally had to do like four or five coats. So if I was going to do that again, I would sand it first and maybe put a primer down so that there's sort of a base where you only have to do one or two top coats. But it turned out all right. Basically the walls, the white walls are gonna be behind the cabinetry. So you're not really gonna see the walls. They're only gonna be inside the backs of the cabinetry. That's why I painted the, the walls white because the cabinetry is gonna be white as well. So yeah, it took me a while. It's really meticulous to get all the paneling nice and neat but I'm pretty happy with the end result. I'll show you the back really quick. So this is the door paneling on the outside. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I just cut around the, um, the door handle here so it's still accessible. And the other side's pretty much exactly the same. There will be a barbecue, fold down barbecue on this side with some power points and stuff like that, but That'll be done in a future episode. Now you might be able to tell I haven't actually varnished like strips on either side. And that's because that'll be inside the cabinetry and I'm not gonna have that varnished. I'm gonna paint that the same color as the walls, that white as the roof of the cabinetry in there. All right, so that's it. Episode 10 is done. The sheeting is complete. Once again, go follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I upload much more regular content of this van build so you don't have to wait so long between each YouTube episode. To see content, you can follow me during the process of each episode. So that's it for episode 10. Thank you for tuning in, guys. The next episode is gonna be about cabinetry. So that's when things are really gonna look like they're coming together in this van build series. I'm hoping to have this van build complete by February. And I just wanna let you guys know that there will be a season two to this van build series. And season two will be basically all about how every different component in this van works and what it's actually like to live in the van. So that'll be like the same format in episodes. I'll break everything down in super detail. And for instance, I'll be letting you guys know how the electrical system works. I'll be letting you know how the fans work, cooking arrangements, fridge, like everything broken down, just so you can literally see in season one how I built it, and in season two, how it all works. So I'm excited to finish it so that I can start season two and bring you guys more content. And seriously guys, thank you so much for all your support. Like it really motivates me to continue and to build the van more just to share with you guys because you guys are super inspiring so i thank you and yeah i hope to bring you guys more awesome content in the near future thanks again for tuning in i'll see you in the next episode give me a like comment subscribe share this with your friends or family if this is of interest to them and i'll see you in the next one catches